Hello everyone, happy Friday. All right. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday to everyone. All right, so I am so excited to be back um, on Friday uh, doing this with you guys. I am just really, really excited about today. Um, we get to do another color day and show uh, showcase Sophistone Lightener, um, which is one of my... Um, favorite things that Milvon carries um, and I use it on an everyday basis and I think that um, there's so many benefits to it and I'm, I'm so glad that we have a guest um, that'll be on to basically showcase um, this lightener in its best light so I am so stoked um, so we're gonna get there in a second but I'm just waiting for kind of people to log on and get cozy so hopefully Fairly shortly, we'll be getting comfortable. How's everyone doing? Hi, hi, hi. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. So, we have a rainy day situation here. I hope everyone is staying um, safe uh, and healthy while they're at home. Uh, we can't wait to get behind the chair again uh, and really just be able to dive back in. And, and I think we're getting there. Um, hopefully soon we'll all be able to kind of do um, do that. So, all right. So let me just see. So my buddy jo Joseph is going to be on in just a second. I just need to check here to see. Uh, yes. Okay. So he's going to be coming on. So I will make sure that we get him going here shortly. Hi everyone. Okay. So let's see here. Um, okay. Where is he? Okay. So I'm gonna so it should be just a second here. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi darling, how are you? Great, how are you? I am fantastic. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I see the <laughs> girls. They're hanging out. <laughs> uh, I think I'm here with my girls. I love yeah. that. My, uh, this is my first client I've done in this whole time. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's good. You kind of got a little break. A little yeah, break. I did. I, I took yeah. a little wellness break from everything, you know? I think that's great. Um, yeah. So... For those of you guys um, who are on, who are uh, just coming in, this is Joseph. Um, we've known each other a very long time. He's super fantastic. He's a really, really great painter. Um, but what I want to do before we kind of get into what we're going to do today, I do want to kind of get to talk to him just for a second and just have him tell um, everybody a little bit about himself. So uh, if you don't mind giving us a little, a little about bit about you. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, hey guys, um, I'm super happy to be here today. I'm super happy to like get up and do some actual hair today. You know, yeah. even if it's you know not real hair. Um, <laughs> I've been doing hair for almost 20 years now, and have been uh, teaching um, specifically like balayage uh, techniques for about just as long. Um, mm -hmm. As Christopher said, um, you know, we met a long time ago. Um, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Uh, I started my career at Bumble and Bumble and learned a lot there. And um, I've had the privilege of working with so many great hair painters that yeah. have really taken me under their wings and mentored me and showed me the way. And because of that, I feel like I need to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. love that. Thank I you. I love that so much. Okay, cool. So, all right, so let's talk about your girl. So what are you gonna be showing us today? What, do you, what are we doing? So uh, today I decided to show you a, um, uh, like a straight up balayage technique. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, like think OG balayage, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna use um, a really simple sectioning pattern. 
um, which is called like a horseshoe pattern. Mm -hmm. So basically we'll just be working in horseshoes around the head, super easy. But it's basically gonna, um, I guess the look that I'm going for in the end is kind of like that, uh, you know, kind of more ombre feeling where, where, where all the lightness is kind of like landing mostly on the ends, mm -hmm. um, but just kind of creating a little bit of softness through the roots. Cool. Love that. Okay. So let's talk about like, all right, so once your client, um, they come in and they want to get this look, you're super excited, obviously, to give it to them. Um, how long would you say an application like this might take you when you start to, you know, if you were working start to finish with no kind of talking to? You know, like consultation to blow dry? Yeah, well, <laughs> consultation to end of application, maybe. Yeah. Um... The whole application process, I would say, can be done in 30 minutes. Okay, cool. I, I book out 45 usually for it, um, but that's because I talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> you have extra time just in case. Um, but it's, it's a really, um, it's a technique that you can do really fast. Um, I even do this a lot at the sink where I just want to kind of like paint on wet hair. Mm -hmm. I just want pop a couple of those in there just to give me some extra layers of interest. Yeah. So I think it'll be kind of useful for people. Cool. All yeah. right. Let's see this sectioning. I'm excited. Cool. All right. So I don't know which is the front or the back. <laughs> my cousin it. Yeah, she is slightly cousin it right now. It's all right. It's all good. It's like a sheepdog. Uh, <laughs> so this is the back. Actually, exactly. I think I need to adjust my... Sorry, I think my oh, cool. uh, I think my camera stand uh, moves a bit. So if at any time you guys can't see what I'm doing, Christopher, please let me know. Oh yeah, of course, uh, of course. So so this is the back, and I'm just gonna like take out the the back knee section. So this is fun. So how many of you guys um, currently are balayaging or painting or some sort while you're working, when you're working behind the chair to those who are on there? Give me a thumbs up or a, a wave if you're, uh, if you're doing that. Okay. So my first section is basically going to be from the occipital to the neckline. Cool. And from there, I'm just going to take out two diagonal sections across the back of the hairline. So basically, I'm, I'm kind of just carving out the, the whole hairline. Mm -hmm. Let me yep. get this out of the way for a second. Okay, I better put some gloves on. <laughs> okay, so uh, once I get to there, then I'll be just kind of literally going around the head from the ear to the back center and taking down about uh, one to two inch sections, depending on how much boldness you want to see on the ends. Okay. So if you want to see a lot of drama on the ends, your sections are going to be smaller, so like half inch to one inch. Okay. If you want it to be really natural, then your sectioning is going to be more like one to two inches. Got it. Okay. That makes exactly. complete sense. Um, and then I think I'll just show you kind of that while I'm going around. So I'm going to actually get mixed up so I can kind of do them simultaneously. Is that, is cool. That Perfect. Perfect. Um, I, I took the liberty of pre-mixing because oh, cool. of our time. Uh, <laughs> So um, I've mixed the lightener uh, one part powder to two parts activator. Okay, cool. I am yeah. using 40 volume right now because this is mannequin hair. When I do this technique, this is really important to note mm -hmm. that I start my first halo section with 10 volume. Okay. And then depending on how many sections I take, suppose for some reason it was only going to be four sections. First one's going to be done with 10 ball, second one with 20 ball, third one with 30, and final 40. Gotcha. 
Uh, because I'm going around the whole head, it's going to be difficult to wrench out one section at a time. Gotcha. So I let my activators do the lifting for me. So by the time I finish, it's all lifted to the same level. Yeah, that's super smart. I know. It seems kind of annoying because you have to have a little bowl with each one. But trust me, like, it's always better to have the lightener freshly mixed. Yep. Because it's stronger then, right? So. Yeah. Uh, usually when we get to the, sa the end of our sectioning and we're, we've been using the same lightener the whole time, it's really lost a lot of power. Yeah. You know, especially because you've been painting for like 30 minutes already, right? Yeah. It's so true. I mean, yeah. it's such a good tip. I always um, tell everybody, you know, you want to have optimum results. So, um, you know, the only way to really ensure that is um, and to make sure that you get great strength in your lightener it's um, all about sure that you have, yeah. It's oh. really all, and you know this really well. Um, it's really all about the the texture mm. and the consistency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, a fresh batch is always key for optimal lift. For sure. For sure. I love this. So what's so funny is, um, you know. Uh, Joseph and I have known each other for a long time. So, you know, I'm pretty familiar with, um, you know, some of his techniques. And, you know, it's really cool to see, um, you know, for as long as I've known him, there is a progression in even the way that um, he paints hair. And I think that that's such a, a cool thing to see um, that, you know, you kind of, um, you know, you're not staying stuck in one thing. You know, I think as trend changes and um, as we grow, um, you know, techniques and, and finishes should change a little bit. So it's really cool to kind of see you kind of work through um, a mannequin head, you know, because it's it's really, it's really cool. Totally. Let me just finish mixing this up. So I kind of went back and did my, so I'm working in my bottom nape section. I carved out the back hairline and I'm going to get started. Great. For this technique, I love this like kind of wider brush. Oh, cool. Um, it's It's got a, like a nice firm bristle to it that um, really helps you with your painting. Yeah. What it's so see? funny. They, they call it a power painter and I think it's so funny because it's like it is pretty reflective of how people use it, I think. <laughs> Let me get this going. Okay. So, this. All right. So I'm going to lift up this one, this back hairline, and I'm just going to like paint the hairline like super natural. So kind of, you want this to be kind of fine around the hairline, so that it blends really well. For sure. So you want it to blend well, and you don't want it to lift very much back here because the sun doesn't hit this area. So the the the, the softer I make that, the less it's going to lift. Yeah. And then once I get to the end, I'm just going to kind of start blobbing that on the ends. Uh -huh. Is my angle fine, Christopher? So are you painting internally now, like on the inside yeah, of there? So now I flipped it over and I'm working on the back side. Perfect. And I'm going to leave all this bare. Cool. So I'm only going to the hairline on the underneath side. Got it. Then in the Perfect. interior, I only want to do the ends. Perfect. Because remember, I want all my brightness on the ends. Gotcha. So what I love about this brush is that I can kind of like smooth it back up and it gives me like a super super yeah super detailed and fine super seamless highlight it's really amazing love that cool so and he's going to repeat the same steps on the opposite side yeah. so yeah so he's going to definitely paint so kind of feathering to the yeah. root here and then you know I always have a comb handy just in case like the hair kind of gets tangled up mm -hmm. it's really important for me to work on a super smooth section mm -hmm. because if it's too tangled then um, you know you can get the spots yeah 
Now, um, if you say you place um, lightener in a place that you don't want it, um, and you have to kind of, you know, maybe you erase a little bit. Uh, um, it, do you have any tips on how to do that? If yeah, um, I just kind of have a wet towel, which is my okay. eraser. I, I use it to keep my hands clean, and I can also like, uh, like suppose I did. I, I went up pretty high here, so mm -hmm. I want to take that away. So I'm just going to kind of use my towel to kind of smush it back down. Gotcha. Cool. Oh, there? also, we've got a question coming in. So someone yeah. is asking, um, what kind of brush are you using? So that is the Power Painter. Um, and that's uh, the Milbon brush. That's the Milbon uh, painting brush. But it's also in partnership with Vermar as well. So um, it's pretty cool. So it's a nice uh, brush that you can paint with very, very easily. It's great. Yeah, the, the bristles on it are really strong. So you <laughs> always get like a nice, firm, uh, very smooth application. I think the firmer the bristle, the smoother the application. Mm -hmm. all right. yeah. I lost my original. So that's all I'm doing in the back hairline. And then now I'm just going to start taking my halo sections. Okay. So I'm going from here. And in this case, I'm going to take about, I guess that's about an inch of a section. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, I'm taking a wider section primarily because her hair is so fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the density of the hair would also be a determining factor in the thickness of your partings. Sure. Just in case I forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start working in this side. Now, how often do you find that um, you're using this particular technique to paint a client? Like, do you feel like you use it pretty often? Uh, I'm doing it more and more because I find for some reason it's faster for me. Okay. I don't know why. Like, because I have another technique where I would do the whole back first, then I do the right side and do the left side. And that's primarily so that I can rinse it if I have to. Gotcha. Um, but because we're, we're working with our developers and we're like kind of turning turning up the heat as we move along, then I don't have yeah. to where kind of about. balances out time wise. Yeah, totally. So this front section, I'm going to pull back like this. And I'm going to do this the same exact way as I did the hairline in the back, which is to kind of feather the hairline. Again, we want this to be bright, but we want it to be supernatural. Everybody loves a good money piece, so it's all good. Everybody loves a bright hairline. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. There's something so gratifying about watching a head being painted and like, I'm like, ooh, it looks like it feels good too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's, kind of, it's sort of transfixing to watch people paint hair, isn't mm -hmm. it? I feel yeah. the same way about watching people blow dry hair too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so now we're we've worked in the hairline only so far. Now we're going to kind of get into the interior of things. So I'm just going to take like a nice big section here. Again, because of the the fineness of her hair, I feel like I need to uh, have a bolder section. Otherwise, it might get a little lost in there. Gotcha. And I'm almost digging out like a little V here, mm -hmm. or it could be a U shape, as long as you have some, some depth behind that, right? So that you have enough hair on the end to support your highlights. Gotcha. Uh, we another, let's see. So someone ask, is asking what kind of lightener he's using. Okay, so uh, Joseph is using our um, Elite Clay Lightener. So it is our um, lightener that we use for balayage and painted techniques. Um, it's really, really nice. It's up to nine levels, which is uncommon 
for a balayage lightener. Um, we really um, wanted to make sure that we gave you something that had good strength. So it does have that as well as um, a protective element in it called poly shielding. Yeah, yeah, it does really, really well in that department. And the integrity of the hair feels awesome too. So it's, it's really, really nice. Um, and very easy to use. Um, mixing ratios too, he's using it one to two, but you can go up to three if you need, if you like something a little looser. Good point. And um, also keep in mind that if you do that, it's gonna be a little bit looser, but at the same time, it's gonna be a little bit stronger too. Mm -hmm. so that'll help out. So I'm gonna take, I took another section the same exact way and again, I'm just going to pile my product on the ends and start working it through with my hands. And then what you can do with this brush is kind of like scooch it up a little bit and then use your hands to kind of mm -hmm. blend it back and forth. And this is what's going to kind of make your lines disappear. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing, too, that looks really, really nice about this technique, too, is that someone will have a very minimal grow out, you know, like it doesn't require that much maintenance to maintain this, which I think is awesome. Oh, yeah. You know. Sorry. Can I get closer? Is that better? Oh, yeah, we'll take that. You want to... <clears throat> she can come up if you want. Oh, she should be closer. Is that what? Yeah. I keep to bring her back. I'm so sorry. Hey. Oh, that's uh -huh. okay. I'm like, it's kind of like looking in the mirror. I'm like <laughs> doing the opposite of what I'm supposed to do to fix the problem. It's yeah. all good. It's all good. Yeah, all right. no, it's so funny. I said, we're in, a, we're in a new time where we have to, um, we have to do everything via video. It's okay. Oh, it <laughs> How does my life work again? I know, I know. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is another section. So if I was doing this in real life, this would have been done with 10 volume, and then I would move on to 20 volume here. But just to save some time, I'm not gonna actually do that. Okay. So someone asked, um, <laughs> what kind of toners are you guys going to use on her hair? So we probably won't get to toning her today because of just time. But, um, you know, typically we have a, um, we have our Sophistone uh, Demi Permanent, which um, I did send him. So once she's done processing, I may force him into glazing her <laughs> um, and sending us some pictures afterwards so we can post yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. So you guys can kind of see. Oh. Um, but yeah, I well, sent him this. I actually have one already toned that already that I can oh, just show you. okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That works. Yeah. So... Someone said, yes, please. <laughs> yes, we'll, sh we'll show her um, once yeah, he gets so, through um, some of the application. So what I did on, on an, another mannequin, um, I actually did this one a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, I did a similar technique to this, but I did a little bit more heavier painting in the root area. But um, what I like, one of my favorite tones is the GBEs, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because... Um, I just love a, I love a, you know, gold ash, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, well, it's, beige, it's the perfect, yeah. beige, but it's, it's kind of like a cool beige. So it's mm -hmm. like, yep. it, um, it gives you, uh, the coolness without it going too cool. So like, I feel like you have a lot of control, like, yep. um, it's not going to go too ashy and it's not going to go too warm either. It's like yeah. right in the center. And for me, I like a, uh, a little underlying gold in my color because that's what, yeah, that's what the light reflects on. Yes. Know? Well, and I, you know, I know that there are a ton of people who are all about ash tones and all of that, but, you know, I always try and tell people, you know, you really have to think about um, what colors you're putting against the skin. Um, I mean, also think about, you know, um, Anytime you're working with any cool, super cool tones like that, um, you know, so in some cases, you know, you can actually age someone, you know, because it doesn't look um, oh. as great on the skin. So, you know, there's there's always finding this great balance of 
um, you know, what's like naturally warm and beautiful versus, um, you know, being copper. You know, there's a difference. And I think that um, you get, you find that there's balance, especially within our Sophistone Demi. There's a nice balance of, um, It you know, really is. Yeah, for sure. Like it's a true beige, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Because there's, there's enough balance of warmth and coolness in it. Yep. That it's not gonna, it's not gonna grab an ash tone on over there. Right. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, and then it's one of the other things too. I mean, and this is just a side note, you guys. Is you know we have um, we have this cool technology that's kind of built into it, so it helps to give more consistent results. Um, so that's something too that we we may talk about in the in the future. Um, so you guys could learn a little bit more about that. But I mean, look how pretty his uh, painted section there is. It's so pretty. Love that. I always say if it looks pretty, that means it's going to process. <laughs> So one thing about painting, it's so visual and, um, you know, really where you're placing your lightener is where you're going to see it. And I think that that's such a great thing, you know, it allows you to really be able to customize placement for um, clients. And I think that it's awesome. Yeah. And the other thing about hair painting too, is it's, it's, it's very intuitive. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's nice to have a, uh, a section in mind, a pattern in mind, and all that stuff mm -hmm. to begin. But like, you know, do, do keep your mind open to like yeah. changing your sectioning halfway through. If you notice that the hair all of a sudden starts growing in another direction, mm -hmm. don't force the same pattern on there. Just kind of move, right. go, kind of go with the flow. I hair will tell you what to do. I swear it will. Yep. All right. So this was what? 20 million? So then this one will be 30. Got it. It's cool. I mean, it, I always say, you know, and I, I repeat this all the time. I always love a good systematic approach where, you know, you can know exactly what you're doing and how to get through ahead. So I love the idea of starting with 10 and then moving to 20 and then moving to 30 and then I moving do to too. 40. It's, it, yeah. you, you really wind up having more control. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, when do you choose to like c cover with um, plastic, like a cellophane, or versus like not? Like, do you have do you have tips and tricks on that? Uh, like when you, yeah, I do. Um, if if you know, like you know what you're what you're getting yourself into. So like a job that um, requires a lot of lift, and you feel like you're not going to get the lift you need because maybe she's had a single process or something like that. Yeah. Whenever you need to keep the product really wet and really active for a long time, mm -hmm. definitely cover it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I used to cover everything, but now I'm kind of feeling a little bit guilty of how much plastic I use. And I'm trying to really be aware <laughs> of that. You go. And, and I'm finding that um, I actually don't need it as much as I think that I do. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Cause like once you get your painting down to a, to a science, I'm layering all these sections right down on top of each other. And I'm not worried about them bleeding or anything because I know exactly where they are. I place them in a way that I know that they're not going to get um, demolished by the yeah. coming section. I love that. That's super helpful because I always find that there's this, um, there are some times where I feel like I should use you know, there, are, and then other times where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't, but then you're, I think you're scared that you're not gonna get the lift. But I think if you kind of trust, trust your painting a little bit yeah. more, you, you will get the results. Yeah. I also think that um, leaning into your intuition too, a little bit when it comes time to make decisions like that. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, but you know, since I've been using the Milbon lightener now, I'm finding that I actually need to use plastic less. Do you find that? Because mm -hmm. yeah. it moves. Especially if you mix it three to, um, you know, um, three to one, then it's like, yeah, yeah. It never dries out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's so funny. I mean, there, it's like um, the consistency of it is is so nice, and you know, it helps to kind of you know obviously have a little bit more of an ease of application. But then, like the element of actually having the lift and the performance, I think that's where it gets like um, good because I think people are so used to having a a uh, actual lightener that doesn't lift. So they're manipulating it to do things that really it's not meant to do. So, you know, for us, it was like we wanted to have um, a balance of that, you know, and make sure that it, um, it it performed, you know, and I think that that's where we kind of excelled in, in this particular case. I 100% um, yeah. agree with that. Yeah. I mean, um, I, so, I, I was, you know. Someone actually commented here um, that they like the the way that you're blending the roots. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's me. That's um, that's yeah. This is what's going to give me the seamlessness, and you know, um, that's kind of the point of this uh, this kind of technique because it really mimics what the sun would have done. You know. Yeah, totally. Um, thank you for that comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things too. I mean, if people, if, if a lot of people are not used to it and not seeing it, it is kind of interesting. Um, and it definitely, but you should try it if you, um, you know, next time you're able to do a head of hair and you're doing a painted technique, go ahead and try and blend it that way. You'll see that you, um, you'll get a very seamless blend and it's really, yeah. really soft. Mm -hmm. Really great. Well, so um, to that point, I'll just kind of go over, yeah. again, just kind of like um, dig into that a little deeper. So again, I mean, loading all the product on the end and then kind of working from there. So I'm just kind of taking the end of the brush and I'm just kind of like lightly pushing it up really. Mm -hmm. And then once it's kind of where I want it to be, then I kind of blend it a little bit more with my hands. Mm -hmm. And again, just it's just like a nice soft, but firm push. You don't want to push the product off the hair. You really right. just want to smudge it up. Yeah. It almost, um, you know, for those of you two who do like a lot of like shadow roots and a lot of like melting and things, it helps you to ha to not have to do that as much when it goes um, into the um, the glazing process or the toning yeah, process. Absolutely. You don't have to do as much work there. So right. um, exactly. there's something to be said about that. That's a really good point, Christopher. And I think that like when you um, when you paint the hair this way, you do more times than not save yourself uh, the dropping of the root and, you know, yeah. uh, to blend everything, like, because it's going to lift exactly the way that you want it. So, yeah. Um, so like after this process is for, you know, depending on her natural level, anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes, right. Um, I could tone her with nine GBE. <laughs> And then it's still going to be kind of deeper here and brighter on the ends. Yeah. Right? yeah because yeah, yeah. that's the way that I've lifted it in the first place, you know? Um, but, you know, I know that there's some times where that's unavoidable, like on, on really dark hair that wants to go really light or somebody yeah. that has like artificial pigment in the hair. We have to kind of, lean into more foilage work in those yeah. pieces. And then you have to do that kind of toning. Yeah. So suppose I did like a more foilage um, situation here, which means the foil is going to kind of lift everything to the same level. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I would use 6 GBE here in the root to kind of like this yeah. section, And then I would just go straight in with 9 GBE on the ends. And then I would just take a uh, what's this called? It's been so long since I worked, I forgot everything. The wet brush. <laughs> wet brush. <laughs> and, just, and just brush it through. Um, and that'll blend it enough. Totally. Does that make sense? For sure. For sure. Super helpful. Nice. Uh, and then, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... Um, 
yeah, it definitely makes things easier. Um, we spend a lot of time kind of playing with, um, you know, painted techniques and, you know, and all sorts of things. And okay. it's so interesting to figure out what works and, and kind of, you know, what doesn't and that kind of thing. But it's definitely uh, very, very interesting um, to see a painted technique because everyone has a different approach. Everyone has a different That's, approach. And, and, you know, everything is like kind of open to your interpretation as well. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, your your painting can be super, it can definitely be your signature. Yeah. You know? And um, the other thing about it, too, is that, like, it's, it's a technique that you kind of learn once, mm -hmm. but then you just kind of master for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, for example, yeah. I've been, my painting style has consistently changed over the past 20 years. Yeah. You know, consistently. And I'm always finding new ways to, mm -hmm. well, yeah. the way to skin a cat, you know what I mean? For sure. And, you know, and the other thing too is like, you know, products make advances, you know, like. You Use know, advances. De developer. <laughs> you know what we were painting with 20 years ago? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You know, it's so, so Fake crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny well it's always we always I mean, joke about it I you know I had asthma from using that stuff <laughs> it's so true it does oh man yeah. you only need it on the second to make it work you know oh boy but it, it it's just crazy you know it, it's definitely had its evolution and I love you know the one thing about painting and balayage and all of that you know it kind of I feel like, you know, people were doing it then, not so much. Um, and then it kind of came back and had a whole new life. Um, and I feel like it's kind of been at the forefront for people for the past, you know, at, at least the past seven years, you know, and it's, um, you know, and it kind of has continued to stick around. And I hope that actually it, it continues yeah. to stay because I, I, I think that there's something so beautiful. Oh, and, this will and, never go away. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I, I hope. I also think yeah. foils aren't going to ever go away either. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a time and a place for all of it. Yeah. You know, I'm just hoping that we don't have to do any chunky highlights anytime soon, but I keep seeing it come back. I keep seeing it in articles. I'm like, no. Unless it's for the right person. Ugh. It should not come back, okay? I, I am a firm <laughs> believer that that should not be a thing. <laughs> it's like the shag rugs of the night. <sighs> Some things just should not come back inside. It just shouldn't, <laughs> you know? I mean, although I'm sure there's someone out there who is still requesting that. Actually, I, I have a couple of people who actually say that to me all the time, and I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that today. Yeah. <laughs> all uh, right. We so just where kind we of like turned around and now we're working on the opposite side. And cool. this time I'm going to work from the back center to the back front. Okay, gotcha. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to that. It's just what makes sense for me. So you could do it the opposite way either. Uh, opposite way also. Yes. Completely makes sense. So you guys are going to get a really nice angle um, this way too. So it'll you'll be able oh, to... Oh, good. The angle's better than yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Now my painting hand, arm is on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's tricky on the, on the camera to kind of get all the angles, but you'll be able to see the smoothing technique really well. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, it's going to be so soft and so pretty. Um, I can't believe that um, time is going by so quick. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing good. Another crazy. Yes. Yeah. I love that. So pretty. I'm yep. just gonna kind of drop her there. And you guys, I don't know if you could see that, but her back is actually lifting um, pretty, pretty oh, well. Yeah. You know, just you know, if you guys were looking for a reference. Yeah, she's like a level like seven that. right now on the back. Yeah. That's yeah. So you guys, um, once again, if you're just joining in, uh, we have Joseph Mullen here. Um, he's working on um, a painted technique with us. And, um, uh, you know, he's really phenomenal. 
um, at um, painting ahead, that is for sure. Um, and I think he's kind of reinvented it so many different times and um, does such a great, great job. And so I wanted to have him on for a little bit to be able to kind of just show you some technique, um, hopefully something that you guys are able to maybe implement, you know, once we kind of get back behind the chair and start working again. Um, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Yeah, you know, get happy with your questions. Yeah, if there's anything you want to know, um, you know, feel free to. Um, you also, know. if you can't see something, again, don't don't be shy. Speak up and tell me to move. You know. Yeah, we don't like mind. Out there that are. <laughs> and it, also, if you want, if I do something that you kind of missed or didn't understand, please uh, do let me know that too. And uh, what's your um, what's your Instagram handle? It's Joseph Mullen. Cool. Just my first and last name. Perfect. So easy to find him. Um, feel free to follow there. Also, you know, um, Milbon too. We um, every Wednesday and Friday we're trying to bring um, education of some sort um, to help kind of keep us inspired and motivated. So we'll continue to do that. If you have any suggestions or um, any questions about anything or would like to see certain things, please leave that in the comments as well. We want to know that too. So um, he's moving pretty quick. He's actually at the front of the head. So. Yeah. I feel like I didn't even didn't even notice you painted uh, the oh. other two pieces. <laughs> I know. I hope I'm not going too fast. No, no, no. It's good. No, it's good. No, it's great. Cool. So, how many sections do you think you have left in the head? Two. Um, I would three? say. Like, say. Subsections? Uh, two. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's like crazy. Once again, you guys, this was like such an easy application. You know, once you started to get moving, it's like, it really does move pretty quickly. You know, you can get through a head um, really, really quickly. Um, how do you, um, this is kind of an interesting question and I know, it varies per area and, you know, what salon, but how do you price um, your, your painted highlights versus, um, you know, maybe something that you're doing for, you know, by foil or something like that? Like, how do you go about that? Um, I, I basically charge by the hour. Okay. Got it. Um, okay, cool. it um, I used to have like one set price for foil work and one set price for balayage work. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, that was kind of like towards the beginning, but it would, it used to take me a lot longer to paint hair than it did the foil. So that made sense. Yeah. But now it, really, it doesn't. So like gotcha. it takes the same amount of time to do everything. So cool. Um, I'm kind of moving into like an, like an hourly rate type of thing. Okay. I think that makes sense. That's a good, yeah. good way to do it. I love that. Because people always ask. They're like, how do you price this out? And I'm like, you yeah. know what? I'm going to just ask. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say, like, if it's a new service in your salon, for sure, definitely throw an upcharge on it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, OK. This is another question that comes up often when we talk about painting. Um, do you, so when you're doing a single process, do you do it all at the same time? Or do you do your single process and address the highlights separately? What, I would say person? that I do both. Okay. Um, I probably do them at the same time, maybe 80% of the time. Okay. Um, especially nowadays when we don't have to paint right at the root like we right. need to have to do, you know? So right. that really saves me a lot there. But um, back in the day when, when we were still painting heavier at the root, um, I would 100, I probably, it was probably the op opposite. 80% of the time I would do it separately. Okay. Then um, because I needed that brightness at the root that I don't feel confident that I could paint into the, to the single process color and get the lip that I wanted there. 
Gotcha. So I feel like better just to do it separate. And again, it's an hourly rate. So if I have to do that, then, you know, I'm getting paid for all my yeah. time. That makes sense. Love that. <laughs> cool. So you're up to um, heading towards the front of the head? Yep. Okay. I have, I'm taking this section here, and then I'm just going to leave this bit of the hairline out, and I'm going to tackle that last. Cool. Yeah, you guys, we're doing we're doing really good. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, so what we'll do is afterwards, you guys, you know, I'll have um, I'll have Joseph take a picture of his painted mannequin, uh, and then um, of his other girl that he has as well, and we'll um, we'll repost them on our uh, story so that you guys could kind of get an idea and see what um, went into his uh, painting for today, um, which is super, super fun. Um, and you'll also be able to look back at our IG story if you're just now logging on and you uh, missed something. Yeah. That looks great. I just wanted to bring this to your attention too, because you, uh, there was a question earlier about um, erasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I feel like this, is a bit too mm -hmm. much right here, right? Yep. It's gonna look really solid um, and I don't like it. So I'm just gonna take my towel with my finger and I'm just gonna literally erase it. Cool. And is that is is that the dry part of your towel or is that wet too? It's wet, yeah. Cool. And then just kind of re-blend it again. Cool. And now I'm much happier with that, so we can continue. Yeah. Well, and you can see a big difference too. Um, yeah. For sure. Yeah, and like you mentioned earlier, like what you see is what you're going to get. So if something doesn't look right when you paint it on there, then it's not going to look it's right. Not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not right. <laughs> it's not right. If it looks bad, it's, it's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right, it's wrong. <laughs> Oh, man. Right. Now I'm going to grab my little hairline piece and I'm going to just going to kind of comb this back. Okay. And I'm going to paint it away from her face. Again, always kind of starting like lower down on the section and kind of working your way up. This is going to guarantee that you don't put something too bright too close. Okay. And then once like I've pretty much used all the product on my brush, then I'm going to start kind of gently tapping it further to the root. Because the more saturated an area is, the, the higher it's going to lift. Mm -hmm. Painting that straight back. And I'm painting that from the root to the end. But then I'm going to flip it over and then kind of work on the ends of the inside of the section. But I'm not going to go all the way up. Just maybe. Gotcha. So, way, um, someone is side, adding. With this side and that side being painting, it's going to be much brighter on the ends, which is what we're looking for. Gotcha. And then someone is asking, oh, so he's using um, our Milbon Sophistone Elite Clay uh, with uh, 40 volume, um, just because we're working on a mannequin head. Um, and yeah, he's using it um, um, one part powder to two parts uh, developer. Yes. So that's what he's doing there. Cool. Yeah. And then um, I think he's up to his last section on the head here. So, yeah. yeah right. I mean, how quick this is to do. I mean, it's really. Yeah. Uh, it's this so is. Awesome. I think I mentioned earlier too, but I just want to say it again, just in case uh, new people join. Um, this is mm -hmm. also a really good technique that you can do at the basin mm -hmm. on cow dried hair after you after you shampooed it, but before you gloss it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so oh, I just, so just have the client is sitting at the shampoo bowl and I'm painting her hair, mm -hmm. you know, sitting, yeah. sitting straight up. 
it's almost like they get to take a nap while they get their hair done. <laughs> yeah. So someone is actually asking, um, so can, can you use this technique on curly hair or would yes. you approach it? Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, with curly hair, now depending on the, the tightness of the curl. Yeah. So if, if, if the curl is loose enough that I, when I hold the, the hair nice and taut, like I always do, uh -huh. then I can kind of straighten it out with my fingers so that I'm able to paint it. Uh -huh. That's what I do. You don't really have to do anything differently, really. Uh -huh. But if the hair is like really, really tight curl or yes. curl, yes. then it might be an idea to blow dry it first. Okay, right. Yeah, cool. blow dry it straight first, yeah. Cool. That makes complete sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So definitely when, uh, so yeah, for curly hair, you definitely would want to just kind of blow out, you know, you don't have to flat iron it smooth, but oh, no, yes, right. just blow it out so that at least you get a smooth, smoother surface to be able to paint on. Yeah. 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 The tension is going to be so important when it comes to that. Um, so we are actually getting, uh, comments uh, as we're as you're painting about curly hair and basically they're saying yeah they they had a question earlier about um, whether or not the technique could work on curly hair which we answered and I'm I was just saying that. that because everybody was thinking that so yeah great question and yeah yes you definitely can yeah for sure and then let's say great question too by the way I have about two more bits left and then I think cool. we'll have still enough time I guess yeah to then I'll show you the tone of the other mannequin. Yeah, we'll have a couple minutes and then we can, yeah, do that for sure. Um, so, so you guys, what's really, really cool about this whole thing is that, you know, um, I feel like when it comes to us and uh, being at home and uh, talking about technique and doing everything via video and all of that, um, you know, we really... Uh, I think it's brought us hairdressers together, you know, it's, um, and we kind of are um, interacting more and communicating more. And I think that this is such a cool thing, um, you know, that we're able to kind of just get on and be able to share and maybe just provide some positive energy, um, you know, in this time, because it's such a weird time, but um, yeah, but it's really, really cool. It's really cool. Look at that. Look at that painting. I tell you, there's something about it. I'm like, it'll put me right to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at it. <laughs> so you all go falling asleep now, you know? I, listen, I am yeah. awake. I promise. <laughs> we can nap in a few minutes. All right. I'm just going to have a look at my balance for a second. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. So I just realized that I want to make this look a little bit more like the other side. Um, you know, it's not like every, every piece has to look exactly the same. Yeah. So, like, you know. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't look like the same exact thing. You should try to like, kind of make each one just like a, look a little bit different. Like yeah. the way that it's blending in here, like how high it goes, how, you know. Yeah, totally. Just would give you like one more layer of interest, you know, if it wasn't yeah. so. For sure. Really Let's take this last hairline piece. Ooh. Last hairline piece. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got um so we've got a couple minutes, you guys, before we're gonna like 
wrap up things. But before um, we kind of get to that point, uh, once again, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that, um, you know, we're here to support you in any way that we can. We appreciate you guys joining us and um, each and every week and going through um, techniques and, you know, um, we thank Joseph, um, you know, Milbon absolutely adores him. And um, we thank him for taking time out to actually do something oh, like this for us. Pleasure. Yeah. Oh, really, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely um, appreciated for sure. And, um, you know, we, we just want to spread positivity. And I think that, um, you know, hopefully we're able to do this, um, when it comes to showing you guys these techniques. Um, yeah, when all this craziness is over, I'll have to get you all in the Milbon studio and show you, <laughs> show you all up close and personal what's going on here. I know, I know. It was so fun. We had such big plans, but you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, we all know. <laughs> I know. So it's, it, you know what, it's all good. I always say this, this was meant to just give us a, a second to reset. And so, um, so hopefully that's what we're able um, to do. And I think that that's great. She looks gorgeous. All right. That's pretty amazing. You painted that quick. Uh, that's kind of like the back. Cool. You notice like I kind of left this like all yeah, little natural hair. Yep kind of into the way that that looks. Cool. Other side is looking more like. And then, oh, uh, oh, your other girl, where is she? Yep, yep, I'm gonna bring her out right now. Ooh, let's see her. I get excited about this. Like, yeah. I knew that I was gonna. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the tone. I'm not really sure what's going on. Ken's been playing with this um, <laughs> I actually just went and grabbed it. It's all right. See, this is what happens. <laughs> She's got a little back comb in there. Oh, doing... I didn't even know it was this style. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No worries. So, right. I mean, you you could totally see, though, um, the tonality of it. It's yeah, really, let me just really kind really of try to brush some of that out so you can kind of see. Um, so, you know, of course, in, you know, this particular light, it's, it's probably looking a little bit, uh, yeah, warmer, a little warm. but like, if you consider the fact that like her hair was as red as this, then yeah. I think that gives you a little bit of perspective, right? For sure. So For this sure. is much cooler than that, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, if this were a real live head, then you would definitely for sure see that more beigeier tone. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the reflex. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty, you know, and it's spot on, you know, there is lighting on it, but we really did, um, you know, yeah, right, I'm right in front of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, it does represent the tonality really, really well. And I think that it, that it's really spot on when it comes to tonality. Yeah. For and sure. I really got the amount of lift that I got, um, on this type of hair with this lightener is, is crazy, I think. Yeah, for yeah, sure. This really well, even on my hair. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, I, we appreciate you tuning in and we, oh, we yes. are so appreciative. So oh my gosh, Joseph, you're the best. Oh my gosh, guys, once again. again, we will see you right soon. Now, but... <laughs> you're like, no, I don't want to do another one. <laughs> 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 no. We appreciate everyone. Joseph, thank you. Um, pleasure. To everyone else who's around, who's watching, we'll see you guys um, next week. And um, make sure that if you're not following Joseph, you do that um, because yeah. uh, he posts quite often as well. And there's always some good stuff going on on his page too. Yeah. So we I also wanted to mention that I'm, I'm cooking up a new painting workshop called Ooh, cool. Painting. So be on the lookout for that as well. We love that. Yeah. All right. We will see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Joseph. Mwah. Big love. Bye.